One of the chief complaints I see popping up against fish oil supplements is that fish oils are often rancid, oxidized, and harmful to our health in that form. Considering the many health benefits linked to fish oil, it's pretty concerning to think that the fish oil supplement that you've been using to help your health is a double-edged sword and causing you harm if it's gone bad. So let's discuss the science of oxidized fish oil and how bad it really is for you. I actually looked into this a long time ago and ran across a single study in humans that assessed the impact oxidized fish oil has on the body's oxidation. So it means, uh, do you experience greater oxidation of your cellular components when fish oil is oxidized? This is of some concern because when our cells become overly oxidized, which means that they become damaged, at least in this context, the cells don't function correctly and are more prone to dying. For example, omega-3 fats are known to be incorporated into the membrane of your cells that make up your body. And once incorporated, they can change the fluidity of the cell, improving the cell's ability to function through the scattered receptors that engage with many molecules, including hormones, that affect cell function. However, if those omega-3s are oxidized, known as lipid peroxides, they can increase the oxidation of nearby fats. So since the cell membrane is primarily made up of lipids, fats, it is a high risk of oxidation if it's encountering these lipid peroxides. It makes sense then that reducing oxidized omega-3s would help avoid the incorporation of damaging oxidized omega-3s lipid peroxides into the cell membrane. In that study, the researchers had three groups. One was given sunflower oil, the other had a confirmed non-oxidized fish oil, and another an oxidized fish oil. Then they measured blood values of oxidation across three measures of body oxidation. Two were different forms of 4-hydroxy-2-hexanol, and nonanol, and the other assessed lipid peroxidation and inflammation called 8-isopgf2-alpha. The marketing department for these molecules was on vacation during the naming process, clearly. Here's the data, and I'll walk you through it. First, let me acknowledge two things. Uh, one, the baseline values between the two groups were the same. And two, I'm cutting the table in half to focus your attention on the oxidation measures. However, in full disclosure, the researchers also looked at some red blood cell measures of oxidation, as well as overall inflammation marker called C-reactive protein. I'll spoil the plot by telling you that, well, nothing changed in those measures. Now, disclosures out of the way, how do we read this? We have the three conditions up top, fish oil, oxidized fish oil, and sunflower oil. And we have the baseline values, including the median value, which is the main result that we're focused on, the medians. We have the results at the end of the study, which lasted just shy of two months. Also, we have our highly marketable oxidation measures on the left that we discussed. And we have two p-values, or two uh, statistical comparisons on the very side. The first is the comparison of all three baselines, and the second is the comparison of the change between baseline and the end of the study across all three groups. So if the oxidized fish oil group had an increase in body lipid peroxides of 60 and the sunflower condition had a reduction of 20, it would detect that difference. Finally, if any of the p-values are below 0.05, it was considered statistically significant. So all that explanation out of the way, when we look at the body oxidation across all three metrics in our oxidized fish oil group, we're looking at the median measures of before and after. We see that all three measures show a reduction in oxidation Okay, not quite. To be fair, the true result is no change, statistically speaking. Then we can then compare across the groups and the results is, are again, no difference. So this data indicates oxidized fish oil does not contribute to increased oxidative state of the body across these three measures. However, other researchers, while they acknowledge the results of this study, they also point out that rancid or oxidized fish oil may have other deleterious effects that we aren't measuring here. And honestly, I have to agree. 
This study that we just went over is pretty well conducted and it clearly shows no negative effects, but we're also limited to the measures that we have. So it's possible that oxidized omega-3s may provide negative health consequences in ways that we haven't measured yet. Is there any proof of that though? Continuing with these researchers, they point out that there have been studies injecting or exposing high concentrations of oxidized fats in animals to the effect of heart problems, inflammation, and honestly much more. However, interestingly, they also reference studies where HHE, which is the uh, 4-hydroxy-2 hexanol that we discussed earlier, but the marketing department came back from vacation. Anyway, the researchers injected HHE and showed increased liver damage, but considering that we saw HHE didn't change with oxidized fish oil consumption, I don't see this as much of a concern. One more study I found, again in humans, looked at biomedical markers like triglycerides, cholesterol, and blood sugar levels. The researchers argued that oxidized fish oil does impede the reduction in blood cholesterol seen in non-oxidized fish oil. But if I'm frank with you, although my name's Nick, I was incredulous as to how they came to that conclusion when they even show evidence to the contrary and ignore other evidence in their own study that also contradicts that verbiage. Here, look for yourself. I won't go through it all exhaustively, but group two is the group consuming more oxidized fish oil. None of the metrics worsened except triglycerides was dramatically reduced. I don't know about you, but that doesn't scream problematic. There's more to that story, but I'll just say that I disagree with how they presented the conclusions. I would argue that oxidized fish oil has no effect for the most part, except triglycerides where it seems to show a benefit. I'd also like to point out one more thing, which I think is really important. In this first study, the researchers had to expose omega-3 fats to 100% pure oxygen for 20 minutes twice a day for 21 days and then encapsulated. How many fish oil manufacturers are going to be exposing your encapsulated fish oil to that level of oxidation? That doesn't mean that oxidation can't happen, but analyses quantifying the amount indicate it tends to be a large minority. So to be clear, it does happen, but if you get yours directly from a reputable supplier and there are several. It just doesn't seem to me that we have anything near enough evidence to claim rancid or oxidized fish oil is actually causing health harm. In fact, we have evidence to the contrary, a uh, net neutral. I don't think that this is a shut case and it's still possible there's something there, but the evidence so far does not substantiate the level of certain fear that some people are exhibiting, especially if you buy from independently tested brands. Speaking of all this uh, fish oil, there are also profound benefits like those outlined in this next video right here. I'll speak with you over there. Bye.